The class limits and frequency are the main parts of our frequency table, but we can add other information as well. Next, we will create a column for class midpoints. Midpoints are basically what they sound like. They are the middle value of each class range. The formula in red can be used to calculate these midpoints. I want to find the average of the limits for each class. For the first class, I'm going to take the lower limit 2 and add the upper limit 6. When I divide that by 2, I get 4. For the second class, I would do similar. I take the lower limit 7 plus the upper limit 11 and then divide by 2 to get 9. I continue this process for all five classes. In our example, all of our midpoints are whole numbers. But if in a different example, they end up being decimals, don't round them. Just leave them as they are. The next column we can add is class boundaries. These values will be used in our histogram, which we will see later. Class boundaries are a lot like class limits, but they connect all the classes together, leaving no gaps between them. The upper and lower boundaries are the values halfway between one class's upper limit and the next class's lower limit. When dealing with whole number data values, the class boundaries will always end in 0.5. So to calculate the class boundaries for each class, I want to subtract 0.5 from each lower class limit and add 0.5 to each upper class limit. You can see those calculations in red and blue on the right side. The last two columns deal with relative frequency and cumulative frequency. Relative frequency is the proportion or percentage of data that falls in each class range. Relative frequencies can be represented as fractions, decimals, or percentages. It's completely up to you, although your homework may ask for them in a certain format. I calculate a relative frequency by taking the frequency of each class and dividing by the total number of data values. For our first class, which has a frequency of 2, the answer would be 2 over 20 for the relative frequency, which is equivalent to 0.1 or 10%. I divided 2 by 20 because there are 20 data values in my data set. I can do a similar calculation for every class. So in the second class, the frequency is 4, so the relative frequency would be 4 divided by 20, which is equal to 0.2 or 20%. Cumulative frequency is a running total of all the class frequencies. The cumulative frequency of the first class is just equal to the class frequency, which is 2. The cumulative frequencies of each successive class would be the class frequency plus all the class frequencies of the previous classes. So for the second class, which has a class frequency of 4, I would add that to the previous class frequency of 2, and I get 2 plus 4 or 6. I continue this process for all five data ranges. The cumulative frequency of the last class should always be equal to how many data values you have. This completes our frequency table for this example. One last thing we can do is create a graphical display of our data. One important graph we will see very often throughout the year is called a histogram. A histogram is a bar chart where the height and the width of the bars represents a quantitative amount. The height of the bars represents the frequency and the width of the bars represents the size of our data ranges. Here we have a histogram for our data set which we created using our five data ranges. Notice the bars are all the same width, since we did such a great job of keeping all our classes the same size. A histogram gives us a good visualization of how our data is spread out. Here we have some nice symmetrical data, like in example A on the right. Mound-shaped symmetrical data is perfect for doing statistical analysis. If this data were a sample taken from a population, we could make some very strong conclusions on what the population data looked like. There are other distributions that aren't as great to analyze, such as bottom-heavy or top-heavy data, which we call skewed data, like in example C. 
Example D would be terrible for us, as the data looks very random and without any pattern at all. Mound shape symmetrical data, like in example A, is called normally distributed and is something we will focus on heavily in the second half of the semester.